Hello, I'm Mary and thank you so much for coming. I pray that as you listen to this video today, your life will not remain the same again. So you need all seven to be working well. There are seven standard purposes of a marriage. So um, I'm going to continue number, number four. Number four. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter four. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, where it says two are better than one. All the um, purposes of marriage, I'm using the letter C for all of them. So the first one we talked about was what? Children. Um, not just having children, but godly seed. Second one was what? Character. Third one was what? Compliment in each other. The fourth one is collaboration. Collaboration. One of the purposes of marriage is to multiply our effectiveness as human beings. All right? So, Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9, we're going to read all the way down to verse um, 12 or 11. Let's read together, everybody. One, two, go. Sorry, that reading is too low. I want some energy. One, two, go. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cause. Did you see that? They said, if one can prevail against one person, it said two that collaborates will most likely withstand them. But he said, three is the best one. That is God. He said, look, eh, the thing that will break people to a, a couple that is together and have God, he said, they never born the thing where. Are you here, somebody? So this is why, really, a strong marriage is not two people that are saying, I love you, you love me, I love you. No, there has, still has to be the God factor. But that's not what we're focusing on in this service. He said, two, we will stand them. And if you look at the, look at the first verse we read, he said, two are what? better than one. So there is power in collaboration. Part of the purposes of marriage is that God is giving you a chance to partner with another force. When two forces come together, they become more powerful than they would have ever been if they were alone. There is power in numbers. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? If only me go and protest somewhere, I carry a placard, just one person, and I shout, we know go grio. We know go agree. You know, whatever, whatever. We know go agree. If it's only me, nobody will pay attention. Am I correct? But if we're 100, if we're 1,000, if we're 10,000, the whole world will suddenly do what? Pay attention. There is power in what? Numbers. And it's a, it's a, it's a spiritual law, but... Science and the secular world have also understood it. That if two people come together with, a, with oneness of mind, of purpose, and, every, and unity, they will achieve more than they would achieve separately. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's called synergy. They will achieve more bringing their resources together than they would achieve if they keep their resources apart. Let me read one of the definitions of synergy that we're talking about. He said, is the interaction or cooperation of two or more organizations, substances, or other agents. He said, to produce a combined effect. This is where I'm going. To produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. So what they're saying is this. I need them um, people that will do props for me. Nick, uh, I want to come here. Come now. Come. Uh, um, the guy in suit, come. So what, what they are trying to say, I need you to understand this. So as you are getting married, and like in the first service I told single people, it, 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 there's no reason to say single, especially the guys. If you are staying single, you are just wasting time. Go and, get, go and watch first service. I explain this. If you are single, you are just wasting time. There's nothing you are gaining by this single thing you are doing. Even God says it's not good. Are you here, somebody? 
God that made you, that made the earth, so he made everything, say it's good, it's good, it's good. When he saw a single man roaming around Lagos, God said, mm-mm, this one no be him. It's not good. So, what they are trying to say is, if this guy, in effect, in his own impact, can make, let's say, 20,000 naira, I'm just using money, this can apply to any other thing. I'm just using money because all of us can understand that. If he, on his own, he's making 20K a month, and she, on her own, is making, let's say, under 20K a month. Now, what they are saying is that if you add the two of them, what they are both making, how much is it? 40, right? But they are saying when they synergize, they are not going to make 40. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? This is scientific, this is social, this is spiritual. Any level you go to is proven to be so. So they will make, they will have effect greater than the sum total they would have done. So, the total here is 2020. If you add it, it's what? 40. But they say if they actually now come together and synergize, they said instead of making 40, they can make 80. Yes, they can make 100. Yes, they can make 140. Yes, so why would anybody want to stay and be making 20? Doesn't make any sense. They say two are better than one. They will have a better reward for their labor. They were getting reward for their labor, but when they come together and synergize, they make better. Let me even bring it down to practical stuff. Let's assume this guy lives somewhere. His rent is how much? Let's say your rent is 100K. Is that your rent? true? But the way you just agree, like say, eh? You wish you can. <laughs> His rent is 100K. Her own rent too is 100K. And they live in two separate houses. If they move together and start staying together, they will not stay in that 100K. They will contribute. This is your rent of 100K. Add to this your rent of 200K. You will get a better place to live in. I get what I'm saying. Once you come together, everything. Especially when you come together, we have oneness of mind. You know that you come together, but you're arguing and going your own separate way. No, no, no. As you guys come together and agree, it works. So I can give you scientific, which I've done. I can give you social and statistical, which we have done. Also, spiritually, it's even the one that has no limits. Because the one I gave you is mathematics. 40K. Spiritually, eh? Spiritually. He makes 20K. She makes 20K. When they come together, they can make anything they want to make. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. Maybe let me move to the side. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Scientifically and socially, the result is even, you know, you can calculate it. But they are saying spiritually, this same thing I just showed you now. Spiritually, the principle is that if they come together, they were making 20K, 20K. When they come together, they can make anything. That means they can move from here to one million. Yes, sir. I will show you now. Please sit down. Thank you. Clap for them now. <laughs> Let me show you. Matthew 18. So this is why it doesn't make sense to be married and you are not collaborating with your spouse. Makes no sense. I see couples fight to win the argument instead of fighting to win the agreement. I'll say that again. I see couples fighting to win the argument instead of fighting to win the word agreement. The agreement is more important than the argument. Matthew 18. I think verse 19. Or is it verse 18? Is it 18, 18 or 18, 19? Uh-huh. Thank you. 19, yes. Can we see the scripture, guys? Again, I say unto you that if what? I can't hear you guys. Are you reading with me at all? That if what? Two of you shall agree on earth as touching what? Anything. I can't hear. As touching what? Anything. As touching anything. Ay, 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 ay. Oh my God. I wish, I wish there's a better way for me to tell you guys this thing, but I don't know if I'm. As touching it. No. Did they say anything? Anything includes what? Anything, <laughs> anything is what? Anything. Everything. Thank you. Anything is everything. This is why it doesn't make sense why two people will marry and be arguing all day. You are wasting the agreement. You are wasting each other's time. The whole reason why we are coming together is because we want to agree. 
God himself said in Genesis, I think chapter 11, when the, those guys wanted to build the Tower of Babel, those guys said, we're going to build the tower, we're going to get to heaven. And God came down to see what the children of uh, men were doing. And God said, the people are one. Thank you, guys. He said, God, he said let's go to see that. I want to where God came down. He said, God came and looked at what they were doing. And uh, DJ, give me now. And Lord came down and said, what the city? And the tower which of men built that next verse. It says, and the Lord God said, behold, the people is what? One. And they have what? One language. And they begin, and this they begin to what? Do. And now, what? Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Spiritual is dangerous. They say whenever a group of people come together and they can agree, God said nothing. So why are married couples not doing everything they can do? Why? Because they are too busy trying to win the argument instead of winning the agreement. The agreement is more valuable than the argument. And the challenge with the agreement is that it won't always happen naturally. Many people are waiting for the agreement to come naturally. When you begin to see value in the agreement, you, you will hate argument. You will do your best to make sure we are in agreement. You are wasting each other's time and wasting what you can achieve. They say you can achieve anything you like. God said nothing will be restrained from these guys. I know how God stopped them. God began to make them speak a different language. Satan still uses these tactics today. People marry and they can't communicate. They can't seem to understand each other. Has it happened to you before? You are saying one thing and saying another thing and the argument is getting hotter and hotter. The more you are explaining, the more angry the other person become. Because that's the same way they stop them in this time. Because they were not speaking the same language. See guys, fight for the agreement. It's, I mean, you are so limitless. He said, nothing that they've agreed to do. He said, Bible says, one, we chase a thousand. Two, we chase ten thousand. Spiritually speaking, there's no limit to what you guys agree. The purpose of my, the purpose of marriage is for two people to come together and agree. There's no, or, there's no relationship that is stronger than the relationship of marriage. Because if you have, yes, you can have business partners and practice this principle. You can have friends and practice this principle. But you see, none of them have a permanence that marriage has. Your business partner might not be your business partner forever. He, he, at some point, will have a different goal than you. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So, so you can, yes, you can implement this at some level with other relationships, but none will be as powerful as marriage. Marriage is the only place where you guys pledge that the only thing that will separate us is death. Your business partner doesn't pledge that. And as time goes on, usually when the business gets to some level, Partners need to pass. He, the partner has his own interest. Yes, we are doing this creative business, but I have my own, what I want. I want to relocate. I want to do so. You see separation starts coming. Marriage is the only one where we said we must stay together. Marriage is the only one where we have brought in permanent children into the earth together. We are joined at levels that no other relationship can join. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Other relationships you can join mentally and um, even spiritually in prayer, you can't join physically. Marriage is the only one that you can join both spirit, soul, and body. So it's the highest level of agreement there is on the earth. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? So it makes no sense when people get married. So you look for a partner. You look for someone that together we can do great things together. That our union will achieve great things. Nothing that they've agreed to do that will be hindered from them. That will be restrained from them. He said, if two of you shall agree as touching anything on the earth, it shall be done. It's a principle of life. If you are any 100K now, and you, your wife is earning 200K now, if you guys can tap into agreement, you can earn anything you want to earn from here. You can achieve anything you want to achieve from here. You will not only achieve what 300K can do. It's not, it's not maths. It will beat maths. Oh, is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's Collaboration. Collaboration. There's nothing I and my wife have agreed about that has not happened. <laughs> I kid you not. There's nothing we've agreed about that has not happened. I'm telling you. Because I've learned it, I always wait. She must agree. I, I, I do not attempt something if she doesn't agree. 
I must get her to agreement. If, she, if, she, if she's not warming up to the idea, I wait a bit and convince her and talk to her and give her time, give her reasons. She must be on board. Once she's on board, there's nothing we've both agreed. Everything happening with our ministry today, we agreed is so. And we already have agreement of how the next phase should look. We agreed is so. Everything you are seeing today, we agreed. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Where we live now, we agreed. I was just, I was telling somebody day before yesterday, yesterday, Saturday, yesterday. I was telling somebody how, where I live today, me and my wife had agreement. See, oh man, you can't be married and you're not talking to your spouse now. How does it even make sense? And you don't have dreams together. See, if you're a married person, go and sit down today. Start talking to your wife. And you see, this is not that we agree today, then tomorrow you're insulting her, your mother, you're foolish, you're a bastard. Because this is what people are doing. There's no agreement. The agreement has to be continuous. It's not one touch. So the place we live today, we agreed specifically. Oh, this is like, you see when you understand spiritual things, it's sweet. I was, I was living in Amo before. Um, not bad, good place. But we, we just knew we wanted to move to the island. So we had specifics. We sat down to discuss. I said, where I'm moving to, I wanted to have 24 hours power. It's not common like it's common today in some places, but at that time it wasn't common. I'm not sure there were more than one or two places in the Holy Ghost that had it. Well, not even common. I didn't even know anywhere that had it, per se. But we agreed that where we're moving to now, we don't want to carry gen. So there must be 24 hours power. I mean, just agreements. We agreed that, um, because when I was living in Amuo here, the major form of exercise I do is I play lawn tennis. Then, so then I was living not too far from Golden Tulip. So I used to go and play tennis in Golden Tulip. We had a group of friends that we all play. So I said, as I'm moving to the island, I can't be coming here to play tennis. So I need somewhere that the estate has a tennis court. We're just, we're writing the things we agree. We have not found house, so. Please, I need to understand, we have not found house. We're just saying the specifics. Say it must be a gated estate where we can take walks. I, take, I like to take walks a lot. That's how I pray and think and all that. I said, we must take walks there. It must be that safe. Then I said, it must have two gates. So there's traffic on one side. You see all these details? That's how I am, so if you know you live like just you like 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 happen to you, I'm not like that. If I buy a phone here, ask Femi and Koda, but I'll be telling them this what I it must have. Does he have this thing? Does he have dual SIM? I travel a lot. I need to get to a country and get a SIM. I am specific with what I want. I'm not. I don't just buy a phone. What's that? That's how some few marry. That's the first fine guy you see marry. Why are you joking? I want turbo charge. You know, I specific. I'm, I'm detailed like that when it comes to what I want. So we're saying I say you must have two gates. So that if there's traffic on one side of the estate, I can pass the other gate and beat traffic. I, I mean, even there are some details of it I can't even mention in church. But I was detailed to the last. There's a way I like my rooms to look. Any house I say must have a study because my books are a lot. So you must have a study. We were so detailed. So when we're looking for a house, we're going from place to place. And we got to one place finally. We felt this was the place was nice. And guess what? The month. We were moving into that estate. That's the month they started 24 hours power in that estate. The month. <laughs> it might look like coincidence to you. It's not. So for the past seven or eight years, I, I, I'm not aware of this, what, where they said this. <laughs> and I'm in Nigeria, yes. As in, there's 24 hours light. One time they sent us a mail that please, there's going to be a power outage from, 4 p, from, 4, from 2 to 4 p.m., because of some maintenance. I say, <laughs> you know, the mail they come from, you don't need to send me mail. Take light, because where we are coming from, nobody, they write us letter. <laughs> take light if you go take light. I'm coming from mainland. You know, they were, they were very polite, so we're going to take light. And when they now took the light, and I found out that the reason they took the light was, they came to my house, it was my house, that was the reason they took the light. Uh, because there was a palm tree or something from my house that the tree was not touching the wire. So the reason they put the light was that they came to trim the tree by themselves. Wow. I said, look, at it. we have toilet that I have not washed. We have other things. If I can't do other housework, please come. Such a nice place, yeah? You can agree with your wife. Where you are suffering now, it's where you talk, you agree to stay. That's what I'm here to teach you. You can agree specifically, but you see, you will agree continuously. You know that tomorrow you insult her mother. You will agree. Oh. They came, this man, he was because of me. They came to trim the trees. And make sure it's not too much touching the wire. Once they finish trimming it, they went to put on the light back. I said, wow. Wow. 
Not bad. So I've not, I've not seen diesel in, in, in like seven years. I'm not aware. I've not seen generator. My brother, I used to live on the mainland. <laughs> oh my God. You go first buy gen. You can't know whether the gen is uh, original. Or not. If not be original, you know you can't use it anyhow. You manage it. Because in power, no go last like that. You can't use it anyhow. Then, NEPA too, they don't cooperate. 2 a.m. Your gen, they run. You know, so you want to use gen sleep. 2 a.m., they go bring light. You can't wake up with your eye ah, because you can't let this be running. You know how much this will be, so you go. You off gen. The moment you off gen, reach up, cover yourself. What do they do? <laughs> una, 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 una. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've suffered all those things before. Some days you have bought Jizu, you have bought fuel that today you are going to use Jen to watch match or use Jen, you have guests coming or use Jen. You can't make such plans without appealing to your Jen. <laughs> Only you just plan. Then you reach there. <laughs> he said, Today we are not working. So I've suffered all those things before. I've suffered all those things before. So we agreed that we're going to live where there's 24 hours power. The month we we're moving into that estate. They started 24 hours power. Guess what again? The month we were moving to that estate, they started building two tennis courts in the estate. That month. I kid you not. <laughs> two. Definitely the estate has about three gates. So when there's traffic on one side, we pass the other side. Every specific we agreed. And guess what? Now, we moved in there, renting somewhere there. But I loved the estate. You can take walks at 2 a.m. in the night. Everywhere is secure. Everywhere is nice. Very quiet. Trees, you see all kinds of birds. So one day, my wife were taking a walk. We say, Honey, this is a good place for us to live. Now, the rent we paid in that place, we didn't have it, you know, in bulk at the time we were paying the rent that time. But a few months after living there, we loved everything. We were just standing there saying, Honey, this is a place to live. And we just agreed that we would own a house here. Now, listen, no. we couldn't afford the rent once. Do you understand? And we are agreeing that we want to own our own house there. It's agreement. They don't charge money for agreement. Yeah. <laughs> and now, now we own a house there. We own a house there. So, I'm telling you, I can give you many more. There's nothing we've agreed. Nothing. Except we have not agreed. How our children will come. How they will, everything about their personalities, we agreed. You know, we wanted twins, you know, so our last two kids, wanted them to be twins. They didn't come as twins. Um, the first one was born August 22nd, but we had already agreed. Guess what? The second one too was born August 22nd. So technically, they have to have the same birthday. And you know, you can't plan that. You can't, there's no way you can plan that. I will impregnate you on the 3rd of August so that you, you can't plan it. <laughs> All we did was to what? Agree. I can give you many more. Many years ago, one day I just sat down and said, honey, I feel like in my retirement years, I won't live in this Nigeria. Now let's believe God for a million dollars. So that when I'm old and ready to retire, I'll just go abroad and buy one nice house somewhere by the beach or somewhere. And be writing books and doing stuff and just enjoying my life in another country. So she said, okay, one million dollars. So now please take note. The time we were saying this thing, it wasn't any time near now. It was over 10 years or so ago. I didn't look anywhere like this. No, no, no if I say I have 10 million, one million dollars, it won't look strange to many people. Ah, you go, no, no, that time. Church was not paying me a salary. There was no natural source of income. I didn't have many money. So it's not, I didn't look like this then. So I just said, let's go a million dollars. She said, okay, are we going to be changing Naira to dollars or are we going to be looking for dollars? I said, I don't know, but let's just believe And we just agreed in the car. Let's, let's, like on a Monday. By Wednesday, Thursday of that same week, a couple came to, to see us and brought cash, $100,000 in cash. The same week. <laughs> Two people clapping, Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Please, that was a long time ago. Don't come and beg me money. It was about 10 years ago. Come say, yeah, this pastor, no. And don't kidnap me, don't rob me, nothing. I don't have any money like that now. The, the point is that there's nothing we've agreed. There's nothing we've agreed that's not happening. So there are many other agreements I've told her. Many others. I just want who have house in any country we like. They'll buy you a house in London, I'll buy a house in America. I don't know how much they say house in London. But I didn't know how much they were selling the house in my estate either. You somebody get what I'm saying? All we did was what? To agree. Our children, everything, we agree. We just agree. This is what we want to do. This is what we're going to do. 
And it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just that we're smart. It's what scripture says. If two of you, is there, shall agree. As, did you bring it up? As touching what? Anything. Look at it now. I'm not the one that said it. Again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth, as touching what? Anything that they shall ask. It shall be what? Done for them. And do you notice it even says agreement prayer? Because many Nigerians, what we know is agreement prayer. We don't hold down and spit on each other. Fuck that with that, with that. And prayer is good. But they say it's what you agree. So sometimes, it's not even, most of this thing I shared, it wasn't prayer. We just agreed. And we started working together as a team. So that's why you can't marry somebody just because they are handsome. You can't marry somebody just because they are fine. I saw one political advert today. One, somebody ran for Lagos State Governor. His name is so nice. When I saw his name, his name. I can't mention his name, of course, but his name is very, not his name that, you know, they are foreign and local at the same time. Very nice name. I said, ah, this guy is running for governor. See, if I don't get sense now, go vote for this guy because I like his name. You know, that's how some people marry. Hey, your name is uh, Jasmine. Ah, I like that name. Will you marry me? This is how some people marry you. You see, that is fine name has nothing to do with how you perform. This is fine. Great. But can two of you work together? Say two cannot work together except they be what? Agreed. Do you have similar values? So you can't be a believer. You want to marry an unbeliever. Your values are already different. You can, you can never walk in full agreement to be a struggle because your values are different. Are you here, somebody? So walk together. Stop fighting to win the argument. Start fighting to win the word. Agreement. And why do people not agree? I talked a bit about that in the first service. It's because we usually marry opposites. You will never marry somebody like you. Hardly. People that do it, they stress out. They, it's always a struggle. They put in more work. What happens more naturally is that you marry somebody very different from you. Opposites usually attract. If you're talkative, you marry a quiet person. If you're a spender, usually you marry a saver. If you are scattered, you likely marry an organized person. Are you here, somebody? Two organized people will wear themselves out. Because they both know where they want something to be. Say, this is how I want it. Say, no, this is where me I want it. Mm, sir, sorry, this is the right way. <laughs> they will argue a lot. But you see, a scattered person has already, already scattered a place. He doesn't care. The organized person will come and organize it to her own specific taste. And the scattered person doesn't mind. We'll scatter it again next week. <laughs> so... Usually marry opposites, both in personalities, in temperaments, and things like that. Opposites usually attract. So there's usually about three stages that most couples or families will go through. It's where opposites first attract, then after that, it frustrates. Where opposites first attract, then it frustrates. It frustrates because the talkative initially was attracted to how quiet the lady was. But after a while, her quietness will now be frustrating him. We say, you, don't you talk. Or you talk small. Say something. You are too quiet. But that's what attracted you to her for now. It's frustrating you. Then the quiet person that likes the person, ah, she can talk. This guy can talk. After a while, he was saying, you talk too much. Please, I'm having a headache. Let me rest. <laughs> the person that is shy and timid likes the person that is bold and vivacious. So you see her in church. She's greeting everybody. You are very timid and quiet. You say, I like this girl. She's very bold and you are attracted. You marry her. When you marry her, she still wants to talk to everybody. And you'll be like, no, can't you just sit in one place? Must you talk to everybody? That's what made you like her before. Are you here, somebody? So opposites first attract, then it frustrates. It frustrates. So it takes intentionality to move from where it frustrates to where you alternate. There are three steps. So there are three stages, rather. So there is frustrate. I mean, there is attract, there is frustrate, and there is alternate, where you both share each other's strength. So you must, for you to move through those three stages, there is so much intentionality. Many people never move to that point of agreement because they're always in the frustrated stage all their lives. And usually those marriages, if they don't break, if they stay together just for the fun of it, they are not agreeing. They fight about every single thing because they've not been able to manage their difference. You are different. For instance, the first thing I do when I enter a car or a house is to put off the AC. That's the first thing I do. The first thing my wife does when she enters a place is to put on the AC. So how are we going to live together happily in agreement if we don't, if we're not intentional about agreement? We can't because we're naturally opposite. So how do we share one room? You see, that's the mystery God made about marriage. 
you, you join with somebody very opposite from you, then God says, I need you to now work out how both of you will agree. That's where you grow. That's where maturity comes in. That's where patience comes in. Somebody get what I'm saying? Because how do we live in a room if I like AC off, she likes AC on? She likes light off in the night. Me, I like everything, not just light, everything to be on. All the lights are on TV must be on. I'm not watching it about somebody else is talking. I'm not if you're like me. <laughs> I don't like a place being dead quiet. But she, she like, in fact, she'll be telling me every morning, that honey, before you, if you know you're going to sleep off the TV now, because those people talking, they are talking to me in my dream. I said, these people talk, why are they talking to you in your dream? Because they are disturbing that talk, that talk. She'll be hearing it in her dream. And most times, we are watching crime channels. So what they are saying is not good. They'll be talking about how somebody murdered somebody, somebody killed 13 people. That's what me I like to watch, how, how police caught them. <laughs> she said, and the kind of things you are living on is bad, bad, I will be dreaming bad dream. I don't mind though. Let them be solving the crime. It's when I wake up, I join them. <laughs> so how do you have peace when both of you are different? That's, this, is what, this is what mystifies many people. I'm so different from my husband. I'm so different from my wife. How do we now achieve agreement? It's why many people are married and never agree on anything. Because they're busy quarreling, winning arguments. We're so different. She likes cold food. I like hot food. I can't eat rice if I'm not seeing the steam. <sighs> My wife can eat from the fridge direct. <laughs> so it's like that. You will see those differences. If you're not careful to frustrate you, there are four, uh, five steps you must take to bring yourself from the stage where opposites attract to where you alternate. There are a few steps. Uh, yeah. So number one, Aware, be aware. Awareness, they are all A's. Number one, awareness. So being aware that we are different makes life easy. Being aware that we are different will be different. Just being aware that, okay, she's a spender. I'm a saver. It shouldn't lead to courage. It should mean that I'm going to complement her area of weakness. That awareness helps that you and your spouse are different. It helps a great deal. The, why you are frustrated is that you want the person to be like you. you, you, you are, your question is, why are you not that's a common question couples ask each other. Why are you not? What you're trying to say is that they must be like you. Why can't you just sit down and do nothing? No, they're different from you. You can do that easily. And the other person says, why can't you just go out? No, we are different. So stop saying the why not, why not. Be aware that opposites attract. You will likely attract somebody opposite from you. If you don't know that, you'll be frustrated for a long time. Awareness. Awareness will help you cope with things that are tough. Awareness. When you know that they are scattered by nature, you will stop nagging them. Why do you throw your things on the floor? Why are you throwing your socks everywhere? Why are you throwing your socks anywhere? And, you, and some women are so, are so funny. You repeat this argument every week. By now, you should have known. As he's entering the house, don't be following him. When you throw his socks, you catch it. Throw his socks, you catch it. <laughs> now you marry him now. Don't be marry him. You should know. That he's going to throw his things everywhere. You've married him for five years. You're still complaining about the same thing. He's scattered. You're organized. That's the reason why God brought you of you together. So follow him. I said, hey, welcome, honey. Good day. How's the day? Fine. Stop following him. So as you're talking, so, you're going to throw his suit. Yeah, so. <laughs> hey, he's going to his socks. <laughs> so, <laughs> follow him. Because he's going to throw everything everywhere. Stop complaining. Put a structure in place to pick it. He might not change. Hallelujah. I blow my nose anywhere in the house. My wife has begged me many times. I said, don't waste your time. I saw my father do it all his life. We must keep the family tradition. She would beg me that, no, there are children here. They might step on it. I said, that's their concern. They should watch where they are going. She has begged me for many years. I've not 17 years down the line. I still blow my nose today. Anywhere I like. So those of you that want to marry me, you better be sure. You know, we just like people on stage. You don't know their character. They have very bad character. You know them. They are scattered. Some are just forgetful. You know those ones that don't flush toilets. You see, everybody wants to marry. These are the facts that nobody will tell you. Some people, that's their nature. They don't flush. So, you must help. Ah, uh -huh. so, stay single now. 
<laughs> Will you rather stay single? Some, you know those people that they can pour water everywhere and it's not painting them, they will just tiptoe. <laughs> Do you know those people? But you, you can't stand one drop of water. And so you, you buy mop, three. <laughs> Instead of complaining, buy three mop. Just with you. Yeah. That's how it's going to work. Awareness. Knowing that this is who they are will help you. Knowing that this is who they are. Some people are lazy. Some people you went to marry, they are lazy. Their mother have spoiled them for about 30 years. You now take the button. Now you want to change them. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner of change and improvements. No, but you go change them. The mother took 30 years to make him lazy like this. He never packed his plate once when he ate. Never washed plate once when he ate. Never asked how food came when he, ate, when he was young. The mother murdered him. <laughs> For 30 years. Then you want to take over button. Now you go come teach him to begin pack plates now. Thank you. Awareness of this is who I married will give you peace. Some things you are fighting over is what you should go and rest over. Some people that God brought to your life, you brought them to your life because you are the one that has their weakness as a strength. So look for the good things about their life and enjoy it. And stop arguing about the one that doesn't matter. Are you here, somebody? Awareness. Awareness. Some people, just being aware of their background will help you. If a man grew where all his life, he never heard his father be tender towards anybody. You no, know, most of us grew like that. We never heard our father say, I love you. We never heard our fathers hug us. We never even saw our father hug our mother. They were running pure military system of government. <laughs> pure military system of government. All talk is very official. No endearment. You never heard, I love you, I miss you, you are beautiful. Never heard anything like that. Those men, or even women sometimes, that grow in those environments will find emotional intimacy difficult. Because that's what, so awareness of who are you dealing with? Somebody that has dealt with abuse or that has trust issues or that had abandonment issues. Her father left when she was young. She's, she's scared of being abandoned. If you are dating that kind of person, you can't disappear for four hours. You didn't call her. She thought she have, you have gone the way her father went. She will be calling and say, where are you? Where are you? Hope you're not leaving me. Hope you're... So you two will be calling every hour. I'm not gone, no. I'm just in my two. I'm still in your life. Awareness. Awareness of who you marry. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Awareness will strongly change how you feel. You see, I have a full series I want to do on managing your emotions. What makes us provoke is that we, you know, we, we, we want to obey our emotions. Your emotions can greatly change with awareness. There are things that would greatly annoy you, but once you know better, you'll find that you can control your anger. It won't be as bad. Why some things are so bad to you is that you've not come to awareness of who you married. His father was a very mean person. He's going to think there's one law of our marriages. So you have to be aware. I, I, there was, um, I, I was driving one day. No, I wasn't driving. I was with my guy that drives me. You know, we're somewhere near my two here. And one uniformed guy, it wasn't the army or anything, but one of the paramilitary was his uniform. Um, he, he drove wrong. He now scratched our car. And the good thing was that I was in my truck. My truck is quite high, so the tire alone is higher than some cars. So when he scratched me, he, was, he hit my tire. So nothing happened to my car because my tire is very high. But he scratched his own car. And he drove wrong. But he, of course, he's a uniform person. You know, in Nigeria, if you're wearing uniform, now you the correct. So he was coming down to come and spark. He came down and said, you people, he... When they wound down, he saw my face. Sir, Pastor, how are you? <laughs> ah, well done. How is everything? Said, Very good. He said, no problem. He went to his car. What happened to his anger? The anger met what? Awareness. <laughs> anger met awareness. Many people make their anger look like it's not controlled, but it's not true. Your anger just needs to meet what? Awareness. Same thing would have happened if that kind of thing happened and he wound down and saw it was a major general that was in the car. You know, younger would just go, <laughs> younger go move. Same thing. 
Or for some men that like women, that kind of happen, you wind up, see one very fine girl. Just say, a young girl, what? You need to. <laughs> give me your number, just give me your number, let's talk after. Awareness. Awareness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Awareness. So your emotions can be controlled once awareness comes. I've shared the popular story of when I went to watch match in Dubai, <laughs> you know, from my hotel. I went to watch Champions League and it ended around, Dubai is three hours ahead of Nigeria. And so the match, and Champions League ended like around 12, past 12, one in Dubai time. So it was 1 a.m. Dubai time. So I entered the taxi back to my hotel from the viewing center. And the driver sitting in front was chewing gum very loudly. <laughs> very irritating. I never heard gum being chewed, especially from a man. Imagine a young man chewing gum. I wanted to give him backhand. At 1 a.m. at night, a man who is supposed to be walking, they chew gum. Are you okay? But I didn't say anything. I was calm. I said he would stop. You know, I just felt he would stop. The guy knows about trap, trap, trap. After a while, I couldn't take it anymore. I just started lashing out. Are you what's wrong with you? This is this, this. You're driving professional. I was giving him coaching, leisure, um, success, motivation. Are you not even ethical in front of your client? This I was raking. When I rake, 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 can't let the guy talk. The guy said he's, the problem is that he's usually in night shift because they, their cab service, they drive shifts. That his shift is night shift. So usually he sleeps during the day so they can drive throughout the night. But that on this particular day, he did not sleep. So as he's driving me now, he's feeling sleepy. <laughs> That's why he was chewing the gum. I say, start to chew now. <laughs> Loudly. I want to hear you. Chew loud, chew, chew. If you stop chewing, I deal with you. Continue the chewing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Suddenly, that thing that was irritating me began to excite me. I said, Let's chew. If you have more, give me. I join you. We chew together. See, we reach where we are going. Because I'm not planning to die. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you understand? So your husband, you're complaining, you're always outside. Sometimes he's going to hustle, man. Sometimes he's going to meet where people will give him business, man. So don't stress him every time about you must come, you must come. Sometimes he needs to cool off. The stress in this Nigeria sometimes is crazy. And the way men cool off is not the way women cool off. Women cool off with companionship. Men cool off with space. So sometimes he needs to get away from all of you to cool off. So don't be saying, why are you never home? Sometimes he needs to go outside and breathe and talk to other men. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you understand that the thing that was irritating you can now start what? Exciting you. Awareness. So number one is awareness. I'm going to rush the remaining. Number two is acceptance. Once you are now aware, accept it. Accept it. Acceptance can give you peace. You know, the way life works, life will never be perfect. It's you that becomes perfect in your approach. Life won't be perfect. This life, even if you go to Canada or go to UK, there are challenges they face in those places. So last, last, you will still develop yourself. And learn how to find joy within your space. This is why happiness is not tied to the amount of money you have. It's never, done, never tied to the amount of money you have. Rich people are depressed. Poor people are also depressed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then rich people are happy. Poor people are also what? Happy. That poor person, that is Amala, that he wants to eat in, uh, near gutter, that is 10 naira Amala and 10 naira meat, he's happy. He's looking forward to it. The same way the rich guy He's looking forward to going to one sky roof restaurant that you can view the whole. That's not the secret of happiness. The secret of happiness is acceptance. The day I see that my mala as something special and I go and eat it in a coro, I will be as happy as the guy eating escargot and uh, what's all those uh, melone and all these things, eating it. Because one day we're in, we're in London, one of our pastor friends that married to a white woman. They said they want to take us out. And they were searching for a very good restaurant. They wanted to really take us out. They wanted to impress us. They were looking for a very good restaurant. They just told me, I told them, let's go and look for Buka. They said, we want to take you out. They look for one very fine restaurant. We have to book a long appointment to get this restaurant. To Why try people in the place? When we got there, they said, this is one of the best restaurants in London. What are you going to eat? At the certain in a French restaurant. I said, right, it don't make sense. I didn't understand them. So I now saw one. I said, what's this one? They say, snail. I said, ah, snail. We know snail now. In my mind, I was thinking pepper snail. I said, snail, ah, bring snail. When they brought the thing, it's escargot. First of all, it's not big snail. 
a small snail. Secondly, the snail is inside, still inside the shell. So they gave me one pliers and one equipment to bring it out. They fly. I couldn't bring one out successfully. So it's not about the world. If you give one of my line, one corner would have made me happier than that escargot. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? So, so acceptance. You know, some of you are saying, oh, you can't live in Nigeria. Uh, there are people in those countries that are depressed. That country you want to go to, they put that unhappy. They are put that poor. There is homeless everywhere. Oh. The America, God's own country. Go now, you see homeless people, the whole cardboard. They want a dollar to eat. They want the, the homeless. So it's acceptance. Why are white people coming here and are living well here? There are many for, I know there are many foreigners here. There are some foreigners that can't even go back to their country. Because if they have given back to their state, generations have stayed here. A lot of the guys that own some of the big places in VI, they have lived here for so many years. They are in their fourth or fifth generation. They have never traveled to anywhere. They don't know anywhere. It's acceptance. That's the same Lagos you say, I can never live here. I will die here. I, 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 if I stay here, I will die. I must go to Canada. Eee. That Canada poor are running from there. Now, Coke will first welcome you. Acceptance. So, the thing that's making you want to kill your husband or wife, accepting it will greatly change how you see it. Accepting it will greatly what? Change how you see it. Number three, appreciate it. One, awareness. Number two, acceptance. Number three, appreciate it. I'm rushing these other ones now because of time. Appreciate it. That difference is for you to appreciate. My wife, being a saver, has saved our life. Me being a spender too has brought benefits because I'm more, I'm more a risk taker. You see, a risk taker will usually marry somebody that is risk averse. So they'll be balancing themselves out. You, you both need that balance. Two heads are better than one. You both need that balance because you create a better perspective of the issue. If two of you only see things in one way, two of you only see, this is why you see some couples, uh, the husband just say, honey, let's sell everything we have and go and buy Bitcoin. He's a risk taker. But if you marry a risk advice, they say, mm -mm. worst case, share you to half. Take this half, go and take the mad risk you want to take. But we will still live after Bitcoin. Keep half. We have school fees. We have other things. It balances it. But if only one person is making this one, you go and sell all your house, sell your property. Enter MMM. <laughs> Enter Bitcoin. Say crypto. You want it? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> There are all kinds of things people are selling today. I just laugh. My brother, at the end of the day, money only answers, answers to value. Real lasting wealth, still tied to value. Forget the magics. Appreciate the difference. It's balancing out. Then number four, adjustment. Adjustment. Adjust to your spouse now. You know that, you say, uh, he has body order. Uh, adjust now. <laughs> now the reality, oh, you're not going to marry a perfect person. They will come with one comma. And the truth is that you don't even know your comma ahead of time, sometimes. Bye. Or you marry somebody that they fat regularly. And it's very thick one. <laughs> Unannounced. It doesn't matter whether they're eating or not. So you buy spray near you. So when they release you to release, boop, boop. <laughs> Always cover up. <laughs> Adjust now. Your wife can't cook. So now that you have married, what will you do? You either hire a cook or you start to cook or not go to buy food. Adjust. Have a customer that supplies you people food. Adjust. You already know she can't cook. And the times you have forced her to cook, what she brought out. <laughs> you know that uh, it's not going to work. Adjust now. She's not neat. She's not clean. Adjust now. It's too late now. You can't drive her because she can't clean. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Adjust. That's what marriage is for. We adjust to each other. Then the last one, if you have done all these things, you'll find out that eventually you guys will alternate. If both of you have a good attitude about your differences and you go through with intentionality these steps I've mentioned, you will find out that you will eventually alternate. And that's where God was going all along, where you guys alternate. What does I mean by alternate? What happens now is that the spender, because he's married to a saver, now begins to be better at saving because they've rubbed off on each other. The saver, because she's married to a spender, now becomes better at spending. 
So it happens a bit now in my house. In my house now, I'm junior assistant saver. Ask her. I save everything. We don't spend anything. Except, of course, when he enter my body. <laughs> but now I'm better at saving. And now she too is better at spending because she never spends before. But now, hey, she buy things small, small. Ah, she can't, before, she can never spend. Since I've married my wife, she has not bought phone before for herself. People always buy, she will never spend. But she will like it all. So how much that is? Mm. It's nice. <laughs> That's all. That's all. End of discussion. We just finished. <laughs> But now she's spending a bit more. So that's alternate. You find out that the scattered person becomes a bit more organized because they are married to an organized person. And the organized person loosens up a bit because some people are just too organized. No spontaneity, no ingenuity, no creativity. Everything is organized. So we'll talk, we'll greet good morning at 8 a.m. We eat at 8.30 on the table. Then we leave the house 9 o'clock. We have sex 8.45. Everything is too planned. No spontaneity. When you marry a scattered person, hmm, they will teach you to relax. Life is not like that. Cool down. <laughs> it's because of my wife that I go to airport early on my own. Airport. Then go wait now. If the flight is four o'clock, we leave home four o'clock. <laughs> How many of you are in that group? Ah. I've missed my flight a few times because I like play. I like play. And I'm not good with keeping track of time. She said at all. <laughs> if my wife is flying at 4 o'clock, she wants to leave home 12 o'clock. I say, why? Are you the owner of the airline? <laughs> now you they check people in. Why? Flight at 4 o'clock. Let's leave at uh, 3.30. We go right there. <laughs> she wants to leave 12 or even 11. Say, you're not the owner of the airline. Your name is not Peace. You're not the owner of Air Peace. <laughs> not Peace. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? But when they marry, they rub off on each other. You rub off on each other. And the scattered person becomes a bit more organized. The organized person becomes a bit more relaxed. Hallelujah. Ah, the day I missed my flight in Dubai. They paid me, I was like a refugee. <laughs> we were early. In fact, we've packed our things in the morning. We have gone to check in the morning. All our load, we've dropped it with them. We had some few hours. I so said, let's enter town and go and groove. We'll come down, we'll come back. You know, a scattered person is not planning. Because a planner knows that one of the things about planning is that you plan for the unexpected. A planner always has money, he has insurance, he has plans for what we didn't plan for. A scattered person is very optimistic. In his mind, everything is always going to work out well. That if they say the distance from your house to the airport is 30 minutes, he's calculating that. It's that 30 minutes exactly. Not knowing that there can be traffic, there can be go slow, governor can be coming, rain can fall. It's not, it's, everything must work. As we enter town, time to go back now where they try to come back, see traffic. The first driver that took us when we were checking in, that traffic was there, but he knew side road. This other one that was taking us the second time, he palm in here. <laughs> when you see man that palm in here, he can't know book, he can't know what, the, he can't know something. He palm in here. I nearly beat that boy that day. I said, you don't know any road? He said, he doesn't know any road. You can't stay in traffic. You think you don't... I said, if I give you slap. No, you depart. How do you have time to palm here as a man? I mean, you're not... If I see that guy, I go see beat him. If I see him now. That's how we missed the flight. If it was only my wife, that morning when she go check in, she go sit down for airport. To make sure she's there. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? If you handle the rest well, you'll find out that you eventually begin to what? Alternate. The person that didn't used to talk at all, if they marry a talker, they will start to talk. The person that talks a lot before, if they marry a quiet person, eventually they will also learn to be quiet. And you'll find that you become a better, more refined human being when you marry right. Were well, you blessed this morning? Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Can we take one minute to pray? For those that are single, they're going to pray that God will give you an agreement partner. Somebody that two of you can have the same values and agree about great things for the kingdom. Great things that you want to do together. Because collaboration is not just about your personal needs. You guys need to come together 
and agree what you want to achieve for God. One of the things that strengthens the home is that you have something higher than just both of you. There must be something bigger than just I love you, you love me. What, what are you and your wife? What are your, what are your goals you have together? What big things do you guys want to do together? It helps to keep a marriage strong. When two of you have so many things together, if me and my wife want to keep marriage now, it's going to be very hard. We do too many things. We, need to talk. we usually need to talk per second billing. We need to talk per second. So keeping my list for us is going to be very hard because we need to make a decision this afternoon about something. So the man is not going to work. The reason why some of you can keep my list is that your lives are too separate, too divided. You have your own running. She has her own running. So you guys can keep my list for one month and it's still going. If you do so many things together, you'll find that you can't even keep my list for two hours. It's tough because you need to ask each other something. Are you here, somebody? So as a married person, you should have goals together. It can be goals from things you want to do for yourselves to even things you want to do for the kingdom of God. You can say, hey, as our goal is to support this church or support this ministry or support this cause on the earth. When you have something you're doing together like that, it goes beyond I love you, you love me. And that's what many couples want to do. They want to live only I love you. It's about me and you. No. There will be something greater than two of us that we are trying to pursue. Can we take, lift our hands and just talk to God this morning? That Lord, give us a vision. Give us a passion. Give us something that both of us can do that is bigger than the two of us. Bigger than just loving ourselves. Bigger than just caring for ourselves. Bigger than just caring for our children. Something bigger that we'll do for you. Something bigger that we'll do for you. Thank you so much for listening to the end. I pray that whatever that you have listened to today, you are not going just to keep it but you're going to do what god has told you through this message and please kindly if you're new here or you are not so i mean you have not subscribed kindly just click on the red button below the video and subscribe to this my channel and also you can share this video with someone else thank you so much and see you in my next video bye